Welcome to the webcast, Implementing the CART System to Support Vaccination in Practice, Experiences from the Centre for Addiction and Mental Health. The Public Health Agency of Canada is partnering with Canvax to produce learning resources for healthcare providers on vaccines and vaccine confidence. We value your feedback and use information collected to inform us on future products. Please take two minutes to complete an evaluation survey at the conclusion of this webcast. The link can be found in the description on YouTube and on the canvax.ca website. At the end of this webcast, you will be able to identify strategies and approaches used by the Centre for Addiction and Mental Health to implement the CART system to support vaccination, and identify strategies and approaches for implementing CART in your own practice or clinic. The Public Health Agency of Canada and Canvax have provided a companion webcast titled Needle Fear, Pain and Vaccines, Introduction to the CART System as a Framework for Vaccination Delivery. We recommend viewing this webcast first to learn about the contributors to stress-related reactions during vaccination and evidence-based strategies to improve the vaccine experience for people receiving vaccines and those who support them. I would like to invite our speaker, Aaron LeDrew. Aaron LeDrew is currently the Manager of Trauma-Informed De-Escalation Education for Safety and Self-Protection and Community Education customer service de-escalation training at the Center for Addiction and Mental Health. Erin has been at CAMH for over 13 years with the bulk of her time working as a clinician in medical withdrawal service. Erin has gone on to hold the various positions within the organization, most recently as the manager of the CAMH COVID-19 vaccine clinic. Erin completed her master's in quality improvement and patient safety at the University of Toronto and brings a wide range of skills to her work. Over to you, Erin. So thank you, Danielle. Hello, my name is Erin LeDrew, and I'm here to talk today about the experiences and feedback we've received from implementing the CARD system into practice. This slide is to acknowledge our funders and supporters. I would also like to disclose I have no conflicts of interest at this time. Here are some facts about the problems with needles. Vaccines are the most common reason why people receive needles and pain is the most common adverse event associated with immunizations. Two out of three children and one out of four adults are afraid of needles. Fear can fuel pain and lead to immunization stress-related responses such as dizziness, headache, nausea, and fainting. Negative vaccination experiences contribute to negative attitudes about vaccination and vaccine hesitancy. Up to one person in every 10 refuses vaccination based on fear or pain. The Center for Addiction and Mental Health is an urban tertiary psychiatric care facility. We specialize in offering treatment and care to those with complex mental illness and addiction needs. We first identified a need to reach out to our vulnerable populations for vaccination against COVID-19, and we started by offering a specialty clinic to our dual diagnosis population, where we limited appointment volumes to control for crowding in the vaccine clinic. We made other adaptations to our environment to create a, a calm and quiet atmosphere. For example, the poster in this slide does not use words instead uses images to communicate. We did not turn on the overhead lights, which allowed for only natural light to come into the space. And I'll speak more about these adaptations later in the presentation. But the success of this clinic led to expanding this offer to others who might be struggling with needle fear and anxiety. It was clear from early on in our process there was a demand for clinics specifically to the population of needle fear and needle anxiety. This is where the card system came into play. We needed strategies and organization to our processes for these specialty clinics. And at the time we had slightly different names for them, but there are referred to here as the 4E model in card, education, environment, engagement, and evaluation. As the manager of the vaccine clinic, my priority was ensuring we had a clear process for each of these strategies. For example, 
education largely took place before vaccination day, we worked to establish a process of disseminating card information in advance of the appointment. It included emailed information about card in advance of scheduling the appointment for review and considerations while booking at the CAMH vaccination clinic. Other examples included the adaptations we could make to the physical environment, such as the ones I mentioned earlier, turning down overhead lights, limiting the volume of appointments and staff in the clinics, removing visual triggers wherever possible. This could have been a sharps container, preloaded needles in opaque bins with paper covering the opening. Engagement was another category we used the card strategies, such as assigning a member of the clinic team to greet clients with a friendly demeanor and a smile. This staff member often received a briefing at team huddle about the scheduled appointments for that day, as well as any printed material that could be helpful to the patients. They were tasked with assigning clients to a privacy booth and providing the resources they might need during their appointment, specifically to the appointment checklist. They also disseminated feedback surveys to clients, patients, which were used in our evaluation in order to inform adaptations and refinements to our approach. Here's how we educated clients about CARD. We posted information on our website at the booking page, and it stated, we use the CARD system, comfort, ask, relax, and distract. We provide handouts with a checklist of accommodations that we are able to support. And we can give you options such as offering you a privacy booth, a stretcher to lay down, juice, longer appointment time slots, and a variety of distraction techniques during the appointment. You are welcome to bring a support person to your appointment. In addition to this, the message goes on to say, there are also doctors in the clinic that you can speak with regarding any questions you may have about the vaccine. Please keep in mind, we do not provide or prescribe any medication in our clinic. There are reserved appointment slots for those with needle phobia. Please note that we have a 20 minute window for appointments. In the event you're not able to achieve your goal within the 20 minute window, we will invite you to take a short stretch break outside and you're welcome to come back in and try again for another 20 minute appointment window. This slide provides examples of material we provided in the clinic on the vaccination day. Our greeter stood beside a large poster outlining the card system, which is the first image. And the greeter also had a version of our clinic checklist that included the accommodations we could make in our clinic. For example, if a client knew they wanted to use their headphones throughout the appointment, they could indicate that on the checklist, or if someone knew they wanted a privacy booth, they could indicate this on the checklist and hand it back to the greeter. I'm going to show you two versions of our clinic checklist on the next slide. Important to note that we offered a feedback survey to gather information about the experiences during the clinic. This was part of our evaluation and served to make improvements to our process. As I mentioned, we used a checklist to elicit coping preferences. This slide demonstrates the different versions of the checklist we used. The main highlight and rationale for sharing these is to demonstrate the ways that you can adapt card material to suit your needs in your clinic. We used an adult version shown on the left and the child version shown on the right. There were a lot of valuable lessons learned from implementing CARD at the CAMH COVID vaccine clinic that can be helpful for others looking to embark on a similar approach. Starting with setting expectations, being clear about your approach from the start, checklists and surveys, creating the checklists for clients to identify their needs, preferences and accommodations, within the limits you can offer was hugely beneficial. Create a survey to capture the feedback and opportunities to improve. Appointment timeframe. 
Be realistic on what you can offer and provide de details in advance. For example, increasing the appointment window to 15 minutes or 20 minutes where possible to reduce time pressures for the vaccinator and the client. Create options such as appointment windows with multiple attempts. For example, if you're not able to achieve your goal in the first 15 minutes, we'll invite you to take the break for fresh air and try again if desired. Messaging and communication. Leverage existing avenues for communication, public affairs departments, newsletters, websites, flyers, and posters, and email material in advance. Data. Make an effort to collect data wherever possible and consent is provided. I will share more of our outcome data in a slide following images of our clinic setup. This is a wide angle view of the clinic floor at CAMH, natural light and clean space with limited visual triggers. Here you can see an example of our privacy booths with kid-friendly images, gym mats stacked for laying down, a table with cleaning supplies and chairs for the support person. Here's another example of our privacy booths with signage outside for clean and available, an adaptation from previous clinics based on staff feedback from vaccinators and greeters. And here on a personal note, I had both my children vaccinated at the CAMH clinic. They were greeted with a smile and choice. Katie, my daughter, is seen holding her C card for comfort and her stuffy in hand. Both my kids chose to wear their PJs, which is a comfort for them that we had discussed in advance of their appointment. And my daughter also brought her favorite pillow with her for comfort during the vaccination. Both of them remembered being able to tell staff what they wanted for the appointment and the candy they got afterwards. The needle was forgotten as soon as the dose was administered. The outcome data from feedback surveys filled out included almost two thirds of individuals had reviewed card information ahead of time and almost three quarters of individuals said card positively influenced their decision to be vaccinated at our clinic to a moderate or great extent. About seven in 10 said card helped to a moderate or great extent and that their experience was better than their last needle. Finally, and also importantly, almost all stated they would come back to CAMH to get other vaccines. This finding, in addition to the anecdotal feedback we received, has led CAMH to explore the proposal for a permanent needle phobia clinic. The submission of this proposal is set for the fall and we are hopeful with the support of our CAMH community and partnerships we will be able to establish a permanent service for individuals with needle fear and anxiety. Here is some of the qualitative feedback about CARD from parents, clients, and staff. Take a moment and read these. They're very powerful. We found at CAMH that CARD improved all of these domains. Please take a moment to reflect on some of the concepts and material shared. What could you apply in your clinic setting? And finally, here are some resources that are available to support implementation, directed to healthcare providers administering vaccines to patients, parents, and educators. All are freely available for public use. Here are some additional resources, including videos and QR codes. Thank you, Erin. This concludes our video on implementing the CARD system to support vaccination in practice, experiences from the Center for Addiction and Mental Health.
A copy of this presentation will be made available on the CANVAX website with clickable hyperlinks, including the references used. Thank you, Erin LeDrew, for sharing your experience and to the collaborators who worked on this presentation. For more of our webinars and webcasts, please visit the following websites. The Public Health Agency of Canada Monthly Vaccine Confidence Info Bulletin provides credible and timely information on vaccines to healthcare providers and public health decision makers to support vaccine confidence. To subscribe to the Vaccine Confidence Info Bulletin distribution list, please send an email to vaccination at phac-aspc.gc.ca. We'd love to know what you think. Please take two minutes to complete an evaluation survey. The link can be found in the description on YouTube and on the canvax.ca website. Thank you again for viewing.